I'm Summer Schock, the founder and producing artistic director at Flashback Theater in Somerset, Kentucky. After 10 seasons of producing semi-professional theater that speaks to the soul, I have found I'm often asked the same questions about things to do with flashback. How does flashback operate? Who is involved with flashback? How do I plan a season or pick shows? How do we market those shows? Since these are all common questions, I wanted to take some time to answer them publicly. After all, Flashback is a nonprofit organization, which means the public is the boss. There's more to Flashback than just productions. To support the creation of theater that speaks to the soul year round, we have a team of office staff that work to fulfill day to day operations. Our team is made up of more than just actors and artists, we are a fully functioning business. And like a professional business, we have operating hours. Hours are 11 to 4, Tuesday through Friday. But as a creative business, we also have to operate after hours for rehearsals and performances. We have rehearsals a lot of evenings on weekdays, and we have performances that occur on weekends, including Sunday matinees. Like a professional business, we have fixed overhead costs such as rent, utilities, internet, and maintenance. But we also have our variable costs based on every production that we have throughout the year. Think sets and costumes, and of course our artists. Like many businesses, we have a day-to-day -day office staff, but we also contract many artists for specific productions. That can be actors, designers, directors, musicians, even crew. We also have community volunteers for postering, ushering, and odd jobs like set, construction, cleanup, or just some organizing. And just like any other retailer, you can purchase flashback tickets in person or online, and we even sell tickets over the phone. So who's involved at Flashback? Who makes it all happen? A lot of people are surprised to learn I do not own Flashback. Since it is a 501c3 nonprofit, it is technically owned by the public. That's you. Overseeing the organization is a board of directors who I report to. And while I guide the overall vision and direction, it's done with the board's advice and approval. They get to vote. I do not. And that's essential to the long-term success at Flashback. So my role as producing artistic director is to manage the business and artistic operations of the company overall. I manage our part-time staff and they have responsibilities in the areas of stage management and operations, that's Renata, individual giving and bookkeeping, that's Teresa, marketing, which is Alex, and we also have a community development position and they're in charge of sponsorship, ad sales, and managing volunteers. So as producer, I also oversee our production teams. Uh, that includes a show's director, stage manager, and various designers. The director and stage manager are the artistic and logistic heads of a show, respectively. And many people are surprised that actors are actually the final set of artists that come in to work on shows. A typical show can involve anywhere from seven to 25 artists. And to make all of that work possible, it takes our audience, volunteers, donors, and sponsors, because our shows cannot happen without the support of our community. So when I'm asked who's involved at Flashback, the real answer is everyone. <laughs> well, our season begins in September, uh, kind of think of like an academic calendar. I begin season planning in December or January for the following year. I read scripts and I build a budget. So we have three main stage productions. Uh, we usually try to do one fringe production that's later at night. Uh, we have a junior cast park tour. And of course, our annual season announcement cabaret. We also have additional workshops and master classes held throughout the year to develop new works and also the skills of our artists. Overall, our season is intended to reflect our mission statement to explore our present relationship to the world through the lens of our past interactions as a community and through the passionate pursuit of theater that speaks to the soul. So when choosing shows, I usually seek to fulfill the following. First, a show that's Kentucky-based in setting, character experience, or written by a Kentucky playwright. Two, a show that fulfills the artistic ambitions of flashback artists. Three, a show that has a draw, either from name recognition or artist involvement. Once a season is selected, I seek approval by the board of directors. 
And once they've signed off on it, I get to start putting together our production team and venues for all the shows. Shows begin the production process about nine months in advance. Every year, each of our productions has different needs and a different scope, so no process will ever be exactly like another process, which means also that no two productions cost the same. Our director for a production would guide production designers to make decisions regarding the look and feel of the show before we even hold auditions. Set and costume designers will spend hours researching the intended setting and they'll draft initial concept drawings, idea boards, mock-ups, uh, models. Once final designs are agreed upon, then they're ready to be presented to the cast at the first read, which is usually held about six to eight weeks before the show opens. Following the first read, actors commit countless hours to working on the show during rehearsals, but they also work on memorization and characterization outside of rehearsal. All the while, designers are busy bringing the design of the show from dream to reality. Putting on a show is no easy task and it requires commitment and dedication from all of our artists. To show our appreciation for all of their hard work, Flashback is committed to compensating artists and designers for their time and talent. Our ticket prices for Flashback shows range from $12 for students to $25 for adults. We try to keep the tickets affordable because I think it's really important for our community to have access to our work. But we can only do that because of the generosity of our sponsors and donors. So I wondered, how much would a ticket cost without that support? For last season's production of Sweeney Todd, our total production cost was $20,968. To cover the cost of production with ticket sales only, no sponsorship or donors, and assuming we filled every performance to 100% capacity, that's 112 seats at Stoner Little Theater, your ticket would cost $31. Now, that's not including our operating costs. Once we factor those in for the two months we were in production for Sweeney Todd, your ticket cost would go up to $49. If you know a sponsor or a donor, make sure to thank them for contributing to affordable, high quality theater right here at home. One of my very favorite stories from the first year of Flashback was when a woman came to the show, bought a ticket, and asked me, how do you market the show? I responded with a various detailed methods, uh, which she responded well you should put it in the paper. Well, I said, we were in the paper. I sent a press release and photos. We get printed in the paper fairly regularly for our events. Well, I didn't see it, she responded, which was disappointing to say the least, but I wanted to delve in and I said, okay, well, how did you know to come to the show today? And what she answered was telling. She heard about it from a friend. So when you talk about flashback shows, that is the number one most effective way to spread word. Because even though she reads the paper, she didn't take note until she heard it from someone she knew. Now, that's not to say we don't market. Here are all the ways we share our show information. We poster to eight to 12 counties. We send postcards to a mailing list of people who have come to shows before. We have our press releases sent to newspapers, not only in this county, but all the surrounding counties. And we try to highlight if they have someone in their county in a show. We put up Facebook events. We do ads on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and we do social media posts uh, almost daily. We also have an e-blast that we market to an email group. But truly, when you talk about a show, our hope is that that person then sees a poster or event or post and buys a ticket because they recognize it from you talking about it. So you can support Flashback by talking about just two people today, tell them about a show you loved at Flashback, and maybe invite them to our next one. Well, I like to think Flashback is for everyone. Unfortunately, it's the rare theater goer that likes every single Flashback show in a season. It's our mission to provide an array of experiences for audience members every year, and what you don't like may be another's favorite show, or vice versa. We try to program a comedy, a friend show, a Kentucky-inspired piece, and a recognizable big-name show. 
usually musicals are only every other year just because of the budgetary restrictions. If you want to see more of the shows that you recognize or bigger shows, we do need your support. So consider giving to Flashback.